Hello, my name is Duncan Foley and this is uh, tutorial booklet 4 for beginners. Uh, we're going to be using Flexim 2020. Uh, just quickly scrolling through the tutorial booklet, we're going to create a, uh, a source, a queue, then three processors, then a second queue, uh, fourth processors, which is going to be a testing station, and then a sync. We will be connecting them up, as we usually do from left to right, but it's... Um, it's not really directional, it's flexing, but we, we tend to do it that way. Uh, we'll connect the source to the first queue. Uh, the first queue is then going to make a decision. Um, uh, to it. The source will create three different boxes, box number one, two, and three. When it gets to the queue, the queue will make a decision if it's box one to go to processor one, if it's box two to go to processor two, and box three to processor three. Uh, they will all then go to the queue, two, and then finally onto the tester. The tester will make a decision based on a percentage. Uh, we, uh, in our scenario, we've been, uh, we've, we've been told that 80% uh, of uh, the products go into the tester, uh, pass testing, and go, on, go to the sink and go to the next our customer. Or, or the next department. However, 20% uh, go back to the queue and gets uh, and it, um, goes through the processing again. You can just about see on the tester there's two output ports. The first one, the highest one, goes to the sink, and then the second one goes back to the queue. Okay, moving down, um, we can see here that this is the uh, the source, and it's going to be set to uh, five exponential. We're then going to go to triggers on the source and we're going to uh, do an on creation, create three, three different boxes, ran, random, well not randomly, to, uh, within the done uniform ex, uh, distribution. So it's not going to be box one, two, then three, then one, two and three. We're going to use a little bit of um, mixing it up a bit using this distribution. Uh, we're going to set the queues up and, and uh, we're going to set the processor up uh, to uh, all the processors are going to have a, a exponential 10 we'll copy that across we will then get to the testing station and we will make uh, 80 percent go to uh, port 1 20 percent to port 2 also on uh, triggers of the testing station we'll send every box that comes off the off the testing station black uh, or pink or whatever it doesn't really matter um, and the reason for that is 80% uh, will go to the sink so we'll never see them being black it just goes straight out and um, the 20% that goes to back to the original queue uh, will be a different color and we'll be able to see them going through we'll reset and then we'll have a little bit of look at uh, some of the data uh, coming off the uh, the model see where the, the we think the bottleneck might be um hopefully it's reasonably obvious so then let's go back to the top and let's go to flexim okay this is flexim and i'm going to change the settings to uh, minutes and say okay i'm going to create a source a queue. I remember we've got two queues so I can hold down the F key and create an, an, another one there. Then I've got three processors so I'll put one there, one there and one there. Just tidy them up a bit. They don't have to be so far apart. Didn't mean to press that. Come on, move. Move. Um, create a, a another processor and then we want to sync okay there we go and we're going to use the a key remember it's directional so we've got to go from the source to the queue so holding down the a key source to the queue a again we could do it individually one two three if you um but a quick um uh, feature is you can hold down the shift key and draw a box around them all the processors then hold down the A key and do it to processor one and it will join them all up. Then go from processor one to the Q2. There you go. And then just hold down the shift key somewhere in space and drag and it'll let go of them. Then do Q to processor and processor to sync. And then we also know that the second port of the, uh, the last processor needs to go right back to the, uh, the queue. 
yeah, that worked. Uh, in truth, what we probably do is build a conveyor system, and we will do that in uh, in future tutorials. Okay, let's, let's double click on the processor now. And um, this should be exponential five. And uh, because it's exponential, it defaults to exponential. I could literally just click and copy, uh, change that for 10 to five. But if you want to do it the long way, it's statistical distribution, exponential. And uh, the way, good reason for doing it this way, you can actually see the, uh, the graph. So what it looks like. So there we go. So we've changed it. I now want to go to uh, triggers and I'm going to do uh, on creation. So when these when this source creates a box, do something. And what we want to do is uh, set the label type and color. So if you're using an old version of FlexSim, this might say uh, set item type. But it's uh, on newer versions of 2019, I think, and definitely obviously 2020 sets so label and tap. And then what it does, it even gives it the label type. So, uh, so this is going to create three different boxes. Uh, the three comes from that number there. Uh, they're going to be created in. Uh, they're not going to be created in box number one, two, three, one, two, three. They're going to uh, be mixed up using this uh, uni uh, du uniform distribution. And the numbers are going to be a label called type. So it'll be type one, type two, type three. If you don't like the word type, you can always change it there. OK, so let's click there. Apply an OK. Go to the queue. And we'd like a maximum content of 100. Apply an OK. I'm just going to reset and run, show you what happens. So I'll just speed it up a little bit. Now let's get some boxes. Uh, where, they, where are they? Where are they? There's a red box. So that if I click on that red box, it, it tells me it's a number one, which is fine. Um, just get a couple more. So there's a blue one, and you can see very quickly green ones come afterwards. And if so, if I click on uh, that, so blue are number three, green are number two. Yeah, and that should be a number three. Um, what's happened here is at the moment this queue. If I go to the floor tab, it's sending to port. It's got three ports going to processors one, two, and three, and it's first available. So it sent uh, this one first. The green box came along, and the port one wasn't available because it was still busy. So it went to two, and then another blue one came along, and both one and two were busy, and it went to three. But that's not what we want. We actually want uh, floor item types one to go to processor one, two to two, and three to three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to by expression. And what that does is it gets the expression and it asks the flow item, what item type number are you? And it will then send it to the port with that number. So if it's an item type one, go to port one, which is an item type two to two, etc. OK. Let's uh, go to the queue. Uh, we've changed that to 10,000. Now let's apply. And OK, let's reset. We want to now just change these um, processing times to uh, statistical distribution exponential 10. So there we go. Uh, because I know the other two are the same, I'm just going to copy that, come down to the bottom of the screen, click on the next. And it's the next object that's the same as this one. So it'll go to processor two. And then clicking that will go to processor three. And I can copy that in there. So let's go to the next queue. And that needs a uh, maximum content is increasing. Let's go to the next processor and that needs to be called tester and we need to uh, it takes, change the processor time this is exactly four minutes so uh, you could sort of think that is sort of something automated 
uh, rather than having uh, people involved. We hear people is a little bit of um, variance. Uh, it might, might be three and a half minutes one time, five and a half minutes the next sort of thing. Whereas because it's automated, we're reasonably confident it's exactly four minutes. Now what we need to do is look at the flow tab. It's currently available to go to the first available. So it would just send them all to the sink, even though the second um, uh, port uh, is there. But what we want to do is change that to, uh, where are we, random by percentage. And click on the green button. What we know is 80% go to port one, 20% goes to port two. Now let's go to triggers and create a on exit. Now, when the 80% go to the sink, we won't see that. We'll, we'll just see the number on the sink ticking over. And so we can do it on exit. We can change all the boxes that are on exit to a different color. And what that is the 20% that comes back to queue, uh, it'll be a different color. So let's uh, click on there, visual, just set the color. Um, let's have a little what I'm thinking of today. Uh, let's do a lime. Why not? Okay, apply and okay. And then let's uh, run this model. Um, let's run it for a decent amount of time. So it's, uh, let's run it for 50,000. Uh, let's run the model, make sure everything looks as though it's uh, working correctly before I really speed it up. Uh, oops, press run. All right, so that should be uh, item type one, which it is. And it looks like we've got, we can see some lime ones every now and again, and that they are clearly the uh, the ones that have been reworked. Uh, they, they will still have their own item name number. So that, that originally um, was a, a different color. Um, it's gone through the test and it's been rejected. So it's that one. So there you can see it's randomly picking uh, box one and box three. And there's another one there that's been rejected. That's box one. So if we carry on running, I'm going to speed this really fast because uh, I want to get it to that uh, that value. Takes a little bit of time. Maximum. There we go. So we can see that it looks like there's a bottleneck here. Um, let's uh, click on the processor and let's look at um, uh, the the state. So let's just click on uh, this pin here and let's create maybe a pie chart. Um, no. And this is the testing station, so let's just call it tester one. Apply. And the diameter, let's, let's change the diameter. Looks a bit um, out of radius. Or maybe it's stuck because of the uh, the size of the box. I'll leave, okay, I'll leave it. Oh, didn't mean that. Oh, okay, I put more. I put all the different um, features on there. So when it goes round and you see different colours, I'm not sure if you'll it, it, it'll allow much because uh, let's just slow it down a bit. So I'll go back to the beginning, reset, run. Oh, sorry, um, set, press reset, reset, run. So you can see it's blue, this blue, which is idle at the top um, because nothing's got to it yet. Uh, it's taking a little bit of time to get there, if I actually highlight over it, it's telling me that 100% is idle, and then the first box will come, and that's when it's uh, it starts increasing. Um, so it's processor time. It's still, you know, let's crank it up, get faster. This is on the simulation getting faster, uh, but you can see, let's go right to the end. So by the time it's got to the end, it's 99%, which is um, uh, if you don't want to run a production line like that. So let's, uh, let's stop, reset. Not convinced I need all them. Um, indications, so it's all of these that I've got. Conveying, you don't need all that. But let's just leave it for now. So it's kind of interesting to know you can do that. 
Um, let's just move that processor up. I'm going to right click on it and edit copy and right click further down and edit paste. I'm going to join that up. So, And I'm going to make sure, just zoom out a little bit and make sure I, I have the option to send parts back or so it'll crash. And let's make sure that the floor is by percent, percentage 80 and 20, which is fine. And I've got the output ports. What well, first one is going to the sink, the next one's going to the queue. Um if I ever get them the one moving around, you can just change them like that. Let's, uh, let's see uh, how busy this one is. So I'll expand the statistics. So currently it's idle. Um, let's do a pie chart as well. And it's gone underneath. Oh no, it's gone to the side. So, uh, reset run. So, oh sorry, I didn't reset. Reset run. Oh, it's because I've got maximum. Sorry. Just crank it down and be nice to see it sort of moving a bit. So they both start off as you would expect to be idle. And, and there you go. We're getting the process. The, the reason um, this processor is running slightly more than this one was see if it finishes off like that. Um, yeah, so that is 60 and that's 59. It's probably that um, what the way this is set up is to go to flow to first available. So it'll always go to tester one and then go to tester two if tester one's um, not available. You might want to change that to uh, maybe a, a nice round robin if available. So round robin it's like taking turns so they might change it a little bit but i mean they're not that far away anyway 60 to 59 um so have a lot as i've done a 50 to 50 so he shared it he equally shared it so uh that's quite good um so have a look i think that's everything we do for this tutorial um yep i, I, hope, I hope that's been useful to you thanks a lot guys